Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. This movie oh. was oh incredible. I watched it with my girls yesterday and we absolutely, absolutely loved it. Thank um, you. But yeah. Lynn, you were saying Friday night that this was kind of a long process. This is something you guys, so what did it feel like when you finally got like the go ahead to make this and to do this? Oh, we lost it. We, you know, we're still kind of in this dream of how everything's being laid out and to finally see it finished. I mean, we literally just finished it a couple weeks ago, you know, all the way to the bitter end for everyone. And so we're, we are still in a daze, like how you were feeling, we feel because it's, it touches us how it touches you, you know what I mean? So something that we've always wanted for ourselves, we've had the opportunity to make. And when we watch it, it's something we've always wanted to see. So I, I, I can't even, I'm just, I'm still kind of in awe of everything. And, and like, oh my gosh, look at Buddy and look at Don Juan and look at everything that we did. And I forget that we did it sometimes, to be honest with you, because I get caught up in the story and enjoying it as well. So just really, really proud. And I'm so glad you enjoyed it. This is how your reactions to everything is everything we ever wanted. Thank you. Thank you for such a beautiful film. Um, my question is for both of you, um, there were so many familiar um, pieces from different films. I felt like it was just a wonderful combination you know, with your story. Uh, tell me a little bit about the the things that you brought in from um, different films, because I saw like, I felt like Wizard of Oz, I felt um, Mr. Uh, McGorm's Wonder Emporium, it was beautiful. It's, it's, uh, well, for, you know, for me, well, good morning, ladies, uh, good morning. first of all. Uh, and, uh, for, you know, for me, growing up watching films, uh, my favorites, Willy Wonk and the Chocolate Factory, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and, uh, you know, the original Dr. Doolittle with Rex Harrison and uh, Mary Poppins, uh, all these, The Wiz, I mean, all these were my films growing up. And so they, you know, anything you watch as a kid, they inspire you, they influence you. And I just wanted to have something for this generation, uh, you know, to, to, to see and to, and I wanted people of all colors and backgrounds be represented in worlds of, of wonder. You know, I grew up, there was no one that looked like me uh, that, were, that could fly or had pixie dust floating on them. So, you know, uh, as a father of a little seven-year-old uh, black boy, I, I wanted him to see someone who looked like him in, in worlds of wonder and, and magic and, and, and people around the world to see themselves as well. You know, I loved Annie growing up curly red hair uh, and uh, Mary Poppins was a favorite also and that's really what it was I just loved being in that imaginary world and songs that you could sing in the mirror to yourself and um, all the things that we love to do as a kid but it was as David said just really important to um, show a world of all colors and especially something that our son could see himself in and feel like he could be magical, just like Mary Poppins and, and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So that was the real, the real thing. How do we bring this world together today? Uh, so my family and I noticed that one of the luggage stickers when Forrest Whitaker was opening up was from Wakanda. Uh, uh, Very, we had to rewind and watch it again. We were so moved by that. So can you share some maybe other Easter eggs or fun facts about the film that we may not know or that we can look forward to? Well, you know, uh, Black Panther, that film inspired me so. Just to see uh, uh, Africa um, depicted uh, in that light as it was. And, um, and it was just inspired me so, and they raised the bar so much. The film was so excellent. And so that was my big inspiration for just kind of blowing this film out of the water. And so that was a little kind of uh, shout out to the grand country that Geronicus has traveled all around the world. Even he's been to the grand country of Wakanda. And uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you saw that. But there's a lot of Easter eggs. All of the names of the uh, buildings are named after 
uh, African American inventors and innovators, and all the names on all the buildings. Um, uh, one is Sith in Arms, that's uh, uh, Lynn's father, who was the first Black optometrist in Las Vegas. You have uh, Tharps in music, that's Sister Rosetta Tharps, who, who was considered the godmother of rock and roll. You have uh, A.M. Woods, which is on the corner, that's my great grandmother, uh, who was the invention of heart for me and love. She invented it, that woman invented it for me. Um, so it was important for me, I'm, I'm sorry. It, this film, to have the ancestors and to have great people who have gone before us be able to, like guardian angels, watch over this production, uh, it was very important. And you felt an energy, a soul, a spirit there. Um, the North Star, you see in a building there. Well, that's, of course, was the newspaper of Frederick Douglass, who uh, uh, in the Underground Railroad and all those things. So we wanted to honor not only this character I created, Jeronicus Jangle, as the greatest inventor of all, but we wanted to honor all those who have not been honored. Um, um, Edison's character, when he introduces himself, he says, I'm Edison, Edison Latimer. Well, Louis Latimer, the Black inventor who was credited as helping Thomas Edison uh, invent the, the light bulb. So all these things in there was just really to honor the past with something that was for the, the present. And I'll tell you something else, Lynette, um, and, and some other Easter eggs, and little did we know what was gonna happen with Chadwick Boseman. So that was a nice honor to him as well. But um, Felicia Rashad character, uh, her wig was inspired by, I wanted something different and edgy for the character. And so I said, I want a Tina, I want a Toni Morrison meets Lena Horne for that. And I spoke with Miss Rashad about it and she was like, yes, let's do it. She said, I'm gonna call Tony and I'm gonna tell her. I'm gonna tell her that she inspired this wig. And I was on set with her the day that she shot and Toni Morrison passed away. And I actually had to tell her when we got off set. And you're, you're just like, I, you know, as David said, there are so many things and so many magical things that we felt connected to. And we didn't know that these things were gonna happen. You know, when John Lewis passed, we were able to name the bank after him that you see at the end. Um, so there's so many things that we were able to historically give honor to, and it's something that everyone will look back on forever. So really grateful for that. My question is, why was it important for you to include um, the STEM element in this movie? When I was watching it with my youngest daughter, her favorite subject is math. So she said, Journey loves math just like I do. So I thought that was really neat. I'd love to hear why you wanted to incorporate that. I think it's important to, to show uh, not only the, the uh, performing arts elements of song and dance and all that, but to really show that all kids are not only um, magical, but mathematic and scientific and, in, 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 and innovative. And I think it's just gonna inspire young girls uh, all around the world, young boys to um, kind of break out of what would be stereotypical, uh, what would be expected and that there's really no ceiling. I mean, one of the songs that's, that moves so much is it, it's all possible. You know, watch me rise high above my obstacles. Watch me become who I'm supposed to be. Oh, the possibility, don't tell me it's too far to go. I know that I'm unstoppable because the square root of impossible is me. And, and, and just uh, being able to put that kind of uh, energy out and thought out into the world. I mean, look at the generation that's going to be watching this and that's going to say, well, they're, they're nothing that I can't accomplish. And, and I think it's just, it, it's, it's important to, put those kind of images out into the world. So in, in mathematics and in, in science and all that, it's just, uh, um, I think it's important to, sh to share. And I'll tell you too, Robin, I mean, we, we want kids to find their square root of possible. You know, we want them to figure out what are the things, what is their formula to make things successful? And that's the theme throughout, you know, we had to push through to make this film happen and we want them to find that square root of possible. So it, it, 
I'm a I'm a, a bit of a nerd and a geek when it comes to that stuff as well. So it we loved wrapping it around such a lush story and a, and a beautiful setting to where kids will be like, I I, I want to do that too. I like that too. You know, this this looks fun and good. So any way to encourage them to like homework, <laughs> to like math, you know, we're gonna try to find a way. Um, is how can each of you relate to your on-screen characters? I mean, I have, I personally have many different, uh, many uh, similarities with my character. I feel like we're both very adventurous and, and feisty and um, have this like go-getter personality. I really love my character. And um, I think she's definitely, um, you know, something that really drew, drew me to the story and, and to this role. I think I'm similar with my character in a way that he um, obviously he's a bit jumpy. He's he's kind of a scaredy cat sometimes, but so am I. Um, but I think I think the fact that he's very ambitious to be what he wants to be, uh, like he wants to be an inventor, and like my ambition is to be an actor. I love acting. He loves inventing. So I think the fact that they he wants to be what he wants to be, and I want to be what I want to be. Um, I think the ambition. I think that's what makes up me like my character. Um, I love playing Miss Johnson. She is just warm and bubbly and friendly. And I think those are the sort of similarities that I have with her. And also her determination. When she sets her mind on something, she is definitely going to go for it. And nothing is going to stand in her way. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time today. My family loved the movie. Um, but I want to know what message do you think that you hope your audi the audience takes away from this movie? It's just, it was stunning. I hope the audience takes away the main message of the movie and I think the main message is the power of possibility and the power of belief. And I think my character as well, he's very optimistic and he tries to turn like a negative situation and tries to see the positive in it. Or maybe someone that may seem negative all the time, for instance, Dronicus, um, who thinks I'm quite annoying. He still sees the positivity in him. And I think that's um, one of the main messages of this movie. And I hope that's what viewers and people take away. Yes, um, I hope personally um, that, you know, kids older and younger than me um, watch my character and know that it's okay to be themselves because um, at the beginning of the of the movie especially journey is trying to figure out who she is and where she fits in or even if she fits in um, and throughout the film you see her just kind of grow into herself and find out who she is and know that you know hey maybe maybe I do fit in maybe I don't and that's perfectly fine so I hope um, kids will see that it's it's definitely um, okay to be yourself and that um, you know you're just unique and special special in your in your own way. I agree. I agree with what, what they both said. And I also think I hope people take away that um, the idea of wonder and imagination is not just for children. It's for adults as well. Um, and the idea that you can have a second chance and you can change. If you've made mistakes in your past, you shouldn't let it determine your future because you can change and, and heal and become anew. And I hope that's what people can take away from it. For Madeline and Karen, actually for you as well, Lisa, was there, um, did you follow the script 100% or were you able to add a little bit of you into the film? Well, I think it's also down to the director as well because Mr. David Talbot, he is very free. He likes to um, add in like loads of stuff. He likes to act, <laughs> improvise a lot. Obviously, yeah, the script obviously is just kind of like a guideline of the film, but obviously he loves to throw in stuff. Um, but it was really fun working with him, and yeah, we we didn't a hundred percent, I think, stick to the script, but um, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, David. Yeah. David is naughty. He like, you know, I mean, I mean, he has every right to be. Hey, because he's written it and he directs it. But I mean, he would just add little things. He might come up to you and whisper something in here and try this on the next shot. So even the person that you're opposite wouldn't know what you were coming out with. And so the reaction that you get is completely honest and fresh and new. And yeah. some of those takes have actually made it into the movie, which is really exciting. Yes. I mean, exactly what, what they said. And to touch on Miss Lisa's point a little bit, um, actually on uh, one of the scenes, actually when I'm just meeting, when Journey's just meeting Jeronica's Dangle, um, Journey is just so just bright eyed and bushy tailed. And she's like, oh, what are we gonna do next? And Jeronica's is so depressed. And um, actually Mr. Talbert, he was like, now on this take, 
I want <laughs> you to just go at Mr. Whitaker. I just want you to kiss him all over and do whatever. And so Mr. Whitaker was not expecting this. So in one in one take, I was just like, mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> and he was just like, what? What are you doing, child? <laughs> um, so yeah, Mr. Talbert is definitely very, uh, very free with the with the script and what you can add on. 